in today's episode i want to share with you all the things that you can do along the panorama route in Bumalanga. So the place that I visited is actually inspired by what is known as the Panorama Route in Bumalanga. This is basically a route with very amazing views and sites that you can actually visit as well as activities that you can actually partake in all in a space of just 200 kilometers. And even though there are activities that I obviously want to do while I'm here, it's just such a peaceful place. It allows you the ability to be able to actually come here and unwind if that's something you'd actually like to do. When I checked it online, it's actually such an affordable place. We usually look at this place and think, oh my goodness, if I'm going to do the panorama route, I must really have a lot of money. But I'm here to tell you that that is not true because I'm about to do this route in less than 10,000 rand. And to be quite honest, that 10,000 rand includes accommodation, activities, fuel and transport all the way from Joburg, as well as food and other activities. So the place that I'm staying at is called Guernsey Nature Reserve. And I rolled my eyes because I'm not sure if I can pronounce that well. But anyway, you guys get the gist. And then on the nature reserve itself, there's a lot of other lodges that you can actually choose from, whether you want something more high end, like luxurious lodges, or you want something more affordable and comfortable like I did. I actually opted for a lodge called Pansy Lodge. I will be doing a review of it um, at the end of this video, but so far so good, just based on having checked in and the fact that I obviously arrived at night, but they were still waiting for me to check in at half past eight. They're just, the service has been so amazing. So Panzer Lodge consists of different chalets, including the one that I'm in, that you can actually select from. Um, what I like about the chalets is that they are a bit separated from each other So it's not like there's a room and a room and a room The chalets are separated from each other So you do get the sense of like having your own privacy as well as having your own balcony And then my most outstanding feature <laughs> Is the fact that my chalet actually has an outside shower I've always wanted to try one of those and I did this morning It was so exhilarating like oh my goodness the thought that I'm actually bathing on the outside and because it's such a private place, there's not even a chance of anyone walking by. Your worst case scenario is probably a deer that you're probably going to see in some of the videos because all around the place there's different animals that are friendly, but there's different animals that you can expect to see even as you're just, you know, moving about your day or sitting on the balcony or having breakfast, etc, etc. Anyway, before I take up too much of your time, let's get into the activities for today. <laughs> So now I am sitting having my cup of coffee. <laughs> off to my adventures because i was told that my early outfit would not work i decided to change into this very cute nike um crop top and tight set tight the device that i'm using to mount my phone is a device that i bought at a chinese shop for 300 rand guys only for me to realize after i've bought it that it actually doesn't mount the way that i wanted to and as a result i've had to kind of work around it to make it work because it's just nicer for me to be able to take vid videos like this while I'm driving without necessarily having to be the one who's holding the phone plus also it just allows me to give you guys a proper view of everything that is going to be happening so please do bear so, with me if you see thank goodness to Shemaine at Panzi Lodge I have this map here which basically maps out all the activities that I'm going to do today including three rondevels, Burke's Luck Potholes apparently it's not really potholes the way that you're thinking of it on the road but it's like potholes on a mountain or a building but the site or the view is actually very nice and then i'm going to lisbon falls as well as god's window before i go to kraskop where Charmaine recommended, highly recommended, that I try Harry's Pancakes. Apparently, they are the best pancakes in the world. I hope by the time I get there, I'm actually very hungry so that I can enjoy them. But other than that, that's basically my route. Yeah, let's get going. <laughs> So the route is a bit mountainous so as I'm going up the mountain I'm seeing a lot of arts and craft and I thought to myself let me stop and see what the arts and craft is all about. <laughs> so I'm back in the car and I really loved the arts and craft. The only thing that made me not buy something as yet is that I thought maybe as I continue driving 
there will possibly be more and a wider variety i just hope i don't regret my decision because you know how sometimes you think you're going to find better where you're going and then the grass is not always greener so yeah but anyway now i'm back onto my route <laughs> so guys i literally almost got because when i left the lodge they said i was going to see a sign written the panorama which is this sign in front of me now however you need to first turn onto the r532 towards harskop for you to be able to see the sign so on the map the only reason i was actually even able to see was that on the map there is the r32 but you are coming along a route called the r36 which ideally is the route that will lead you from where i was which is the nature reserve to where i am right now however there's a part of it where you then need to turn um when you're from the nature reserve you'll need to turn left into r532 towards haskop before you can actually see welcome to the panorama Bumalanga tourism sign if you miss the turn off to Raskop, guys, you are going to do a U-turn because I think I've driven for about 7 kilometers and I needed to drive back because as I kept looking at the map, I just kept thinking, oh my goodness, I didn't take the R532 and I'm still on R36. So I did a U-turn, luckily for me, but if you miss it, trust me, you're going to head all the way into a different part of the country. So now we head off to Raskop, where along the way towards Raskop is where there's then the three rendezvous, the potholes, luck potholes, um, Lisbon Falls, God's Window, etc, etc. So now I'm excited for that. So after getting lost, I have finally arrived. Now I am going to go to the main attraction, which is the three rendezvous. Hopefully, because this is a solo trip, mm, hopefully I can find people there who are also taking pictures, who will be kind enough to take awesome pictures of me in this very cute Nike outfit that I absolutely, absolutely love. Um, so yeah, let's go to that. Okay, so those are the rendezvous, guys. One, two, three rendezvous. And they are attached to this entire array of what spans to be the Drakensberg Mountains. Is it Drakensberg? Mm -hmm. What is it? Why have I been lying on this video? Guys, Sonia is my tour guide <laughs> <laughs> for here at Three Rendezvous. As I've proudly been saying, this is the stretch of the Drakensberg Mountain. Sonia's like, hell no. no. It's not a it's not a what is it, Sonia? <laughs> it's a um, Mariscope. Mariscop Mountain. Yes. So this entire thing is the Mariscop Mountains. No, there's a different levels and then. Okay, so there's the three yeah, there. there. Okay. Yes. And then. And the chief in the Mariscop. Wait, which is the chief? The chief is this one. So it, this is the chief. Why is it called the chief? And uh, this one is the three wives of the chief. Oh. Guys, there's polygamy even in mountains. Sonia says the three rendezvous are apparently the three wives of the chief. Yes, Maripe. Maripe. Yeah, yes. So this is like history. Yes, it's the history. So there was a chief called Chief Maripe. Maripe. Oh. Chief, chief Maripe was paid. He had three wives, three wives. Hence the three rendezvous that are named after them. And okay, yeah. So at least now we have a bit of history in context because I didn't know this until I got here. So <laughs> now we all know. <laughs> So guys, according to Sonia, the reason why we're even able to have three rendezvous as well as the Blight Canyon, the whole entire area was closed off. Like it was literally flat land closed off, as you can see from the top of this area here. And then soil erosion started happening, climate change, etc, etc. And then bits and pieces started falling off, which meant this and this and this. And the chief there, as earlier described, with his three wives were actually formed as well as the Blight Canyon which is where we're going to right now. I'll be going on a boat cruise tomorrow on the same canyon but today I just want to get an aerial view out of it <laughs> and share it with you guys. Yo guys English is running away. Okay let's go. <laughs> guys this is the view of the Blight Canyon. You cannot believe how gorgeous it is like seriously <laughs> it's extremely gorgeous so you can see that it's a stretch from 
the three rendezvous there with the chief and his wives and comes down all the way to here oh my god i'm in awe like you will not believe this until you actually come and see it yourself it is so beautiful pictures don't do justice <gasps> they really don't so i am beyond words for this view of the canyon it's definitely something heavenly it's definitely something that you will not find anywhere else and i just can't believe it's actually here in bumala slash limpopo depending on how you look at it we literally have this view you know it actually reminds me of the two heads i think it's called the two heads in naizna but it's just the color of the water mud it's insane like it's literally like a deep turquoise teal kind of color it's absolutely beautiful it's absolutely beautiful like i said i'm taking it back so i'm just going to sit here for a while meditate maybe and then be off to the next destination so i've arrived at burke luke's potholes and it's actually in way closer proximity to the three rendezvous than i actually thought of course there are signs um along the way which you must look out for so that you don't miss your turn but yeah i just think i got here quicker than i thought it was which is great because it means the two places are in close, pro uh, close proximity to each other um which is great you know i do have something to say though with where i'm actually staying for this trip uh versus where i think you should actually stay for the whole entire panorama route so stay until the end of the video because i have a small tip waiting for you at the end of the video with regards to where i think you should actually stay if you want to do the panorama route the potholes a bit more pricey in terms of entrance compared to the three rendezvous and i'm hoping they're worth the money because from where i'm standing after the experience i just had at the three rendezvous i'm just feeling like there's nothing that's going to top that view of the blight canyon so for 65 rands which is basically 30 rand more i hope those potholes are worth it <laughs> I've arrived at what is known to be the potholes potholes just as I thought in what should have been a mountain probably again caused by soil erosion soil erosion Jesus Christ guys watch your English <laughs> um, but yeah then it has like this nice view of the river running through it all the way onto this side which it's great and then it's got all these other bridges like as you can see there's people there there's people here on this bridge as well this place just made me feel like unless you travel in a group you're not going to be able to really enjoy the scenery and the idea of taking group pictures i also want to believe there's a route going all the way down to the river so that you can actually enjoy what the potholes look like from that angle i will snap a couple of pictures of the potholes just in honor of burke luke wherever he is whatever that means um so yeah otherwise i'm not too impressed by the potholes and i don't necessarily think they're worth the hype along the panorama route this is the entrance to lisbon falls there's a stop sign and i think there's like a ticket fee but let's see yes oh it's 15 bucks huh? one five Oh, it's an iron minimal. Oh, what's up? Mazaba 15 brand. It's a number. 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 It's a
here's a closer version of the falls, a smaller version. Let me see if I can't find a spot that is better than the one I'm standing at. Okay, it seems like there's a route that allows you to get closer to the falls. Not very close, but like, you know, close enough. And also from a different angle to be able to see them. I can't believe all these sites are just sitting here in this one area. Like, how lucky did these people get? My God. Anyway. So from where I'm standing now, this is the map that spans the entire thing. That actually kind of looks like the three rendezvous, but it's really not. It's really not. And so that's the view of the falls. Let me just make them a bit further. That's the view of the falls. Um, they fall all the way to the river. I'm convinced that it seems like there's a path that I am missing. To go all the way down to the falls let's see if i can find something so i don't think that i can safely and alone go all the way down to the falls but i do think that there's a way for you to be able to do it um but yeah they look very nice from here um yeah they look very nice from here <laughs> they are definitely worth um that i took to get here they really are and I like the fact that now I can see this part quite clearly there really isn't much to see at the falls except the falls themselves so compared to wasting your time at Luke's potholes I definitely want to come here and spend a bit more time here try go all the way down there's like a, a weird small winding down route which I don't think is safe for me alone but maybe if you're a group and you're probably thinking you're feeling a bit more brave and you have a bit more time then probably there's a way to get down there. They're definitely worth your time compared to the potholes. So I definitely recommend them as a stop that you make along the panorama route. So I have arrived at God's window. Um, it's not very far from the Lisbon Falls. I think it's about eight kilometers away from those falls. So let's go and see what God's window has in store for us. Thank you, ladies. Those ladies over there are like, I should use this nice body to make money. So, anywhere you know where they are hiring bodies where I can make a bit of ching, please point me in that direction. Otherwise, I'm still just going to be doing YouTube vlogs <laughs> until further notice. So now we're in the part of God's window that is called the rainforest. Um, you can tell with all the green that's around that is definitely a rainforest. It actually looks like those scenes from in a movie, you know, when there's like an anaconda that's going to come out. But luckily, we know that the people here in Bumalanga would never do that to us, right? God's window is basically that space over there where people actually come out of from being inside the rainforest somewhere at the back there. So that space is what then becomes called God's window. So they actually see all of this green it almost seems like you would never be able to see all of the screen all at the same time um, from any other different point of the panorama route hence why this is called god's window now you know we are at god's window along the panorama route so i just got back from god's window which is definitely one of the places that i think you should check out when you're on this route and then when I left the lodge, Charmaine suggested that I should stop by Harry's Pancakes because apparently they serve the best food in Khaskop or at least the best pancakes. Um, I hope they have more than pancakes because I'm not really much of a sweet tooth person. There it is. Harry's, uh, Harry's Pancakes, the original since 1986. Let us go and see what the hype is all about. Before we go... <laughs> This is the last stop that I'm going to make before I head back to the lodge. Um, it's basically the end of the panorama route. 
I will be because tomorrow is like day two of the activities that I'm doing on um, this journey so I'll probably I'll be able to properly do a review of everything once I've done tomorrow's activities which is basically slightly towards the end of the video so you guys should look out for that um, but yeah it's been an awesome day and you know what for all the people on my Instagram today who really have been on this journey with me <laughs> because it's a solo trip um thank you so very much um so yeah tomorrow is day two i definitely look forward to that so if i were you i'd continue watching the video so sadly today is day two as well as my last day at Panzi lodge because i was planned to sleep over here until tomorrow which is sunday but duty calls in johannesburg so now i need to cut my holiday short i'm not regretting it though because i've had such an amazing time here the place is absolutely beautiful and peaceful and tranquil it's definitely a place i would recommend if you're someone who wants to stay over um especially when you're planning to do the activities from the nature reserve like the game drive the boat cruise the horse riding etc etc um, but today, the good part is I'm not leaving empty-handed. <laughs> I'm going to do the boat cruise, so I'm going to take you guys along with me on that. It's at the Blight Canyon River. So yesterday, I saw the aerial view of it. Today, I'll actually be in the water, which is something that I'm absolutely looking forward to. So without further ado, let's get to the boat cruise. <laughs> I'm about to show you guys this beautiful canyon that you can see spans all the way behind me all the way that I think that's a private boat I'm not sure I did see packages on it where the package is different than the one that I'm going on because that's the one I'm going on commoners <laughs> but that's the entire um, canyon that we are going to be taking a cruise on so yeah so that point is what you see when you're on the other side, on the side where there's the three rendezvous. So you see that part with the water basically winding all the way around it from all the way from that angle. So you see that top part as what becomes your Blyde Canyon view from the three rendezvous section. So, uh... We are at the nature reserve, which is called Blade Park Nature Reserve. That's why we have animals around, animals such as goodies, porpoise, crabs, spinach, bush bugs, water bugs. Uh, we have also big snakes, mampas, pythons, spiders, fighting cobras. But we don't have anacondas. Huh? <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> no anacondas. Yeah, yeah, so, so you are safe. <laughs> not much one. So before we go any further, you see I have this life jacket on my head. Uh, this life the boat is actually really cruising. Um, I hope I'm audible. <laughs> the, boat, the boat is actually cruising. Um, it's about an hour and a half ride, um, which I enjoy because already I was almost already feeling lazy to do this part of the video because I've just immediately when the boat left, I've slipped into a relaxation mode where I just really want to chill, enjoy the cruise calm down and I also appreciate the fact that unlike some of the cruises that you're going to do at a place like maybe in Durban there's no music on the boat you know it's just you and mother nature the mountains you know the river and it's absolutely absolutely gorgeous it's definitely something I would recommend when you are doing the panorama route as Elia mentioned you can actually see the three rendezvous from this angle Plus, there's this gentleman here who just sits there being angry all the time. Apparently, he's a formation of a rock that has been eroded by all the waterfall that is running through it. I think you guys can see sort of like the white of the water coming down. And it left us with this guy who's just always pissed. But I guess he's a good way of watching over the Grand Canyon. So that view was absolutely amazing. So I just finished the boat cruise and you know what, there's not enough words that can describe it. Um, but the closest I can get to is to say that going on that cruise feels like a 60 minute long massage. Like the feeling that I walked away with is the same feeling of relaxation 
and recollection and just downtime that I usually get when I go for my monthly massages. So I would definitely recommend the boat cruise at the Blight Canyon. I think it's an activity that you can do with the entire family. On our boat, there were kids, you know, two, three kids, I think. And you can also do it with older people, you know, like your mom or your dad or even your granny. She or he would really appreciate it because it's just so relaxing. It really is. And then obviously there's the explanation that you get about the history. Guys, there's a lot of things we don't know about our history, but it's fine. <laughs> we are learning as we go along. Okay, so I said to you guys somewhere in the beginning of the video that I would tell you guys what I think or where I think you should stay if you want to do the panorama route. So first things first, I really and absolutely enjoyed my stay at the Pansy Lodge. It's such a beautiful place. The service is amazing. Irene and Charmaine were absolutely, you know, like they made me feel like part of the family there at the lodge, which is obviously something that you want to experience when you are traveling that far away from home, you know. But if you are someone who wants to do the panorama route and like really exhaust everything, my advice is on your first night, sleep over in Khaskop. However, I did notice that in Haskop there aren't a lot of nice places where you can sleep. So if you're like me and you are particular about wanting to stay at a certain place with a certain view and an ambience, then by all means, please go stay at the lodge and then drive from there to do all the various activities, which is basically the route is like, this is the lodge. You go all the way around doing all the activities, end up in Haskop and then drive back to the lodge at the end of the day. But if you don't have particulars about where you're going to stay and you don't really care, my advice is maybe sleep in Khaskop when you arrive, then spend the one day doing all the activities and then decide that at the end of the day, um, you're going to then go back and sleep at the lodge. I would advise the lodge because they already have their own activities on it that allow you to be at certain views where you see some of these things, but from a very distant um, point of view which again is great if you're looking for some downtime and relaxation time and or once you've done the panorama route of these other activities that I have mentioned, you know. So yeah, I'd probably stay in Raskop and then another alternative is to stay in Woodspring. Um, it's not so far from also the activities, but I would not leave Johannesburg to come and stay in Raskop or to come and stay in Woodspring the entire weekend. I would just sleep there the one night where I know that the following day I'm doing the panorama route activities before I can actually go to a place that is more relaxed and a place that is more cleaner and nicer that I can enjoy, <laughs> you know. Another attraction that's in Raskop, which I wish I had actually had time to do, was call, is called the Blind Canyon Gorge Lift. Um, so I'm assuming it's like a lift from the top of the mountain to the bottom where there's other activities as well unfortunately for me i will not be able to do it during this trip because i now have to rush back to johannesburg um, so which means i have to drive during the day but it's definitely something that i would recommend for you to do while you're in Haskop and just get it over and done with also at the same place they have something called the swing which is absolutely amazing the reason i didn't really fuss about the swing was i've once done the whole swing thing when i was in bali so i don't think it's anything totally different from that except you're doing it in raskop where there's rocks instead of bali where there's like tea and rice um, fields so that's the only thing that i would look out for and definitely put on my list to do along the panorama route otherwise the route is amazing definitely recommended definitely ticks all the boxes and i wish you guys all the best when you do decide to try it